Let's bring on ESPN college football and NFL studio analyst Sam Acho. He's a former NFL linebacker, played in the league for nine seasons, also spent some time with the Buffalo Bills. And we know, Sam, thanks for coming on. A hot topic as of late has been Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs because Stefan Diggs got that money thanks to Brandon Bean. Uh, he's now going to be in Buffalo uh, for the foreseeable future. He said he wanted to retire in Buffalo and, and wants to finish out his career here with the Buffalo Bills, which makes all of us very happy. Uh, but when you see a deal like this when you see a quarterback being locked up to the a number one wide receiver uh, for this long what were some of your first thoughts uh, when you saw this come down too much of it and what I mean by that is a lot of times people say all right well you signed this this big deal now all the pressure's on you but I don't think that a guy like Josh Allen or even Stefan Diggs sees it that way uh, he's he Stephon Dix has been a grinder. I remember playing against him when he was in Minnesota. Like, this dude is a grinder. He, when he was the lowest paid guy, right, I think fourth round or fifth round pick, he was grinding, and he's still grinding no matter what the contract looks like. And so, if anything, I'm excited because of the future stability for the team. They already got their uh, star quarterback locked up, young quarterback Josh Allen. Now you got your number one receiver locked up. I'm excited about that, a top defense. So I'm excited for the future, but this deal doesn't change, in my opinion, uh, Josh Allen or Stefan Diggs present. You know, when you were here for a little while in 2019, things have already start, had already started to change, Sam. Uh, you know, Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott, they really changed the culture. People, they want to be in Buffalo. That wasn't always the case here, right? It was always <laughs> fighting to try and get free agents. And, you know, maybe guys uh, getting out the door after their contract expires. What do you remember about, you know, the way it worked here under them and why has it changed and been so nice for this team and us here in Buffalo to say, you know what, this is an organization where people want to come. Well, Buffalo was one of my, uh, that's the team I still root for in a lot of ways. I played for four different teams. I spent the shortest amount of time in Buffalo, <laughs> but I had one of the best experiences there. Number one, Brandon being the GM, the way that he treats his players. It's not one of these things you, people talk about coaches or maybe even GMs being player friendly. It's not even that. He's just fair. Brandon Bean is fair. He calls it like it is. He's building his roster, building his team, and he has a vision for it, right? Talking about Edmonds, young leader at middle linebacker, and then Josh Allen, young leader. That's all they talk about, their youth, their youth, their youth. And then secondly, what I love is Sean McDermott. Uh, he's He comes off, if you look at him from afar, as this kind of mean, aggressive guy. But when you get in close, you realize he's, yes, he, he he's no nonsense, but he cares about the players, right? I want to use the words kind and loving. I don't know if those are the right words, but he actually cares. And I think that makes players um, respond differently. And then lastly, the culture. If you look at the culture there, you walk into the facility, everything you see, at least when I was there two years ago, it talked about playoff caliber. That was all that they talked about, being a playoff caliber team. And since I've left, they've just increased the standard more and more. And so that's why I'm still excited about Buffalo. Von Miller joining the Buffalo Bills is huge. Two-time Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP. So I'm excited about the Bills. Well, when you talk about the vision that Brandon Bean had, he had a vision for Josh Allen, and they were able to get him in the draft. Uh, many people didn't know or didn't think Josh Allen had the ceiling that the Buffalo Bills thought he would have. And, I mean, look at him now. Uh, on ESPN, you said that he is your top quarterback in the league right now. Why do you think he's number one? Because he has everything you need, not just in a quarterback, but in a leader. Um, I may be a little bit biased because I've played with him, <laughs> uh, but this dude is a man amongst men, right? Josh Allen, six, every bit of 6'5", uh, every bit of 240, I, I don't know, he might, maybe even 250. Um, and he, when the big, people say big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games, I'll add one more, in big-time moments. And Josh Allen does it, fourth and one. Who's the ball, whose hands are the ball going to be in? Josh Allen, he's going to make people miss and make a play. Third and one, game on the line. It's Josh Allen, big-time player, making big-time plays in big-time games. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, mano we mano, my guy versus your guy, it's always going to be Josh Allen. He didn't have to rely on anybody else. He could rely on he, himself, and I. And so with Josh Allen, I get excited about his, his intangibles, right? The size, the strength, the speed. I also get excited about um, the leadership that he possesses. The little time I spent around him, uh, he, he, he was one of those leaders that it seems like nothing phases him. Like, I am who I am. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. I care about me, my team, and my city. 
and the city has rallied around Josh Allen, number two. And then number three, the guys around him believe in him. So as a, as a quarterback or as a player, it's not just about you as an individual. You could be a great quarterback but have no pieces around you. But all of a sudden, look at Gabriel Davis, guys like that stepping up. Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley has gone now, but you got other people stepping in, believing in him. People rally around Josh Allen. And so the reason he's my number one quarterback is not just what he does on the football field, but it's the way that he inspires a city, inspires his teammates, and he doesn't care what people think. And Sam, he is a legit like NFL superstar. Now, <laughs> one thing I noticed Super Bowl week and now coming off the heels of just a couple of weeks before that, basically, the, 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 the loss to Kansas City and what he did to put them in position. Obviously, the loss with 13 seconds left. But one thing I noticed that week, everybody wanted a piece of him in L.A. He was on every podcast. He was on every television station. I mean, I would argue at the award show, I would argue that that loss even did more for him and his stardom in the NFL than any win he's ever had in his career. He is a legit superstar. But that's great. And here's the great thing. You're, you're probably totally right on that. But here's the thing. Josh Allen doesn't care about that. Right? Right. Josh Allen doesn't right. care about the stardom, doesn't care about the fame. Like, he's been the same guy. I was there in 2019. I was there for three, four weeks. And I, I, I was my last, close to my last year in the NFL, right? I'd already played eight seasons. I'd been around, been around playoff teams, been around uh, in college, national championship teams. I know what it takes to win. And I saw that dude. And I was like, yep, that's it. The veterans, Lorenzo Alexander, who was a 14-year vet at the time on the Buffalo Bills, he respects him. The guys on the defense respect him. They know that he's a dude. Let's put it that way. Like, he's a dude. And, and there are certain players, like NFL players, in a lot of ways, I'm not, I'm not going to say they're a dime a dozen, but you can make it in the NFL. But to be a dude in the NFL, to be a stud, there are certain players that have that body type, Josh Allen. Mentality, Josh Allen. Now you got the team around you, Josh Allen. Um that's why I get excited about him. And then we've seen it on the field, critical moments. They put the ball in his hands, and he makes the play when no one else would. I mean, the way that he turned it on in the playoffs this past season was so much fun to watch. That was, if you didn't believe in Josh Allen then, you are a believer after that because to watch what he did, to put the team on his back, to make the throws that he did, to score the points that he needed to make, uh, it was incredible. I, we have been sold on him for a few seasons, but now I think the rest of the world uh, definitely is sold on what type of quarterback Josh Allen is. Uh, but the offseason has been absolutely wild. I mean, the NFL is starting to rival the NFL with some of the moves that have happened this offseason. Uh, what offseason move by the Bills do you think is going to pay off the most this season? Well, easy answer is Von Miller. Uh, um, uh, and, I, and part of the reason is, of course, we were talking about the Bills and the lack of pass rush. And when I say lack, you have a lot of young pass rushers, right? Epinesa, young uh, pass rushers, right? And so if you get a guy like Von Miller, not only do you add to your pass rush, but you add to your expertise, guys who can teach you how to rush the quarterback. Yes, Jerry Hughes uh, could have been doing that last year, right? The year before, you can talk about Trent Murphy uh, doing that. But now you have a guy who has a playoff experience and Super Bowl experience that can teach the young players uh, the tricks of the trade. I came out with Von Miller. So we both played the senior bowl together and, and I, I know him really well. I know the kind of teammate that he is. That's another piece as well, another leader. And so for me, Von Miller is that piece because of the on the field success. I think he had four sacks in the playoffs, maybe more just in the playoffs alone. Uh, and then, and then the, the leadership when he was in Denver, he would throw defense dinners at his house every, 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 every once a week, right? Usually on Thursdays, they do these team dinners. That's the intangibles that people like Von Miller can add and so and I don't know if it was Thursday but I know once a week he would do those dinners so I get excited about Von Miller the addition for the the pass rush but also for the team building and bonding Sam Acho joining us here on One Bills Live well let's take a look at the entire landscape of the AFC because Sam there has been some major movement obviously with all these quarterbacks we know what we have here in Buffalo and in Josh Allen and I think Josh Allen will obviously be fighting for championships for a while but that fight got a lot harder this year with some of the moves that we saw in with the elevation of a guy like you have Justin Herbert, obviously, of Joe Burrow. You still have Patrick Mahomes. I mean, the list goes on and on here. What do you make of the AFC and what it's become? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing to see the way that Joe Burrow ascended. He was playing really well his rookie year, then he got injured. Then he came and stormed on the scene and was outstanding. Obviously, Justin Herbert was second in the NFL in passing yards. Uh, more passing yards than the MVP, Tom Brady. I believe he had more touchdowns as well. Uh, so, so you got a guy like Justin Herbert. Now Russell Wilson comes to the yes. AFC. 
Super Bowl champ. There's a lot to be excited about, not to mention Patrick Mahomes, right? Like, there's so many stars in the AFC, which is going to make some for some really exciting football. Derek Carr got Devontae Adams, and so now you've got weapons for the quarterbacks who are already there. There are so many stars, which is going to make for good football. I get excited about who's going to be able to stop the stars, who's going to be able to, 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 to put, put, some, put some light out in the darkness so you don't see the stars as much, right? And so I think that's when I, that's when I start thinking about defenses and coordinators and 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 yes offensive schemes are great and phenomenal uh, but just like we saw in the playoffs if you have if you don't have a defense that can stop an offense you really have no chance yeah it was uh interesting to see a lot of these teams bolster up on defense after some of their their rivals or opponents within the division made some moves on offense. You see teams start to load up on defense. Uh, it, the AFC is going to be so much fun to watch this season. But if we go a little bit smaller size, AFC East, who do you think is going to be the team that can t- can contend with the Bills this season? AFC East. Um, I think the Jets are still rising, so they got some work to do. Um, the Dolphins, people get excited about Miami. Uh, of course, Tyreek Hill, Coming to Miami is a lot to be excited about. I think that there are still question marks of what Mike McDaniel will be able to do with Tua. I remember y'all saw on the flight, his private jet flying to Tua. He said, I believe in you. I'm going to bring the best out of you. Uh, hopefully he can do that. I still think the Patriots are that team that will try to challenge the Bills. I understand that Buffalo's won the last two AFC East titles. Um, but when you have Bill Belichick and, and Mac Jones played outstanding, and you know you're going to have a top five defense in New England, I still think that you cannot sleep on the Patriots. And so so maybe the Jets will be that surprise team. Uh, but I still see New England being the team that rivals Buffalo. Now you talked about the – Maddie brought up the coordinators and things like that. Talk about the guys stopping these quarterbacks. Bills had the number one defense in the league last year, obviously. They've been very good. You played for Leslie Frazier. You know what he's like. Just give us a little more insight – because we've heard so much, so many great things, and we've gotten to know him, obviously, but how really incredible of a, of a football coach he is. Yeah, he's outstanding, and I was only with him for four weeks, so I didn't really get it, get to understand. Right. You know, I was in training camp, too, so they don't show you uh, the entire defense, but from what I saw during my time in training camp, they are who they are. They are physical, aggressive, attacking style of defense. That's who they are. And they're also a smart defense. You look at the way that the players play, specifically on the back end, Poyer and Hyde are two smart football players. And so physical, aggressive, attacking. And they, I, the, what I experienced was that they want the players to let their personalities show. Right? I love Trey White. Like, I, I, got, spend, I got a chance to spend a little bit of time with him. <laughs> like, let your personality show all across the board. And so uh, I'm sad that Harry's gone, of course. Like, he was a good friend of mine. Harrison Phillips, uh, star, hasn't signed back. And so... Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens on the inside. I think there, you know, obviously there'll be some new people getting production on the inside. But I just love how the fact that he said, go and make plays, be aggressive, be attacking, don't hold back, go make the play. Yeah, uh, we love Leslie Frazier and the guys that are on the defense. Uh, we want to ask you one more question, though. You have a book out. It's called Let the World See You. It's a, a book about revealing your true self, uh, and it will help crack the shell of people who are in hiding and reveal the benefits of a lifestyle lived on purpose. Can you give us a little synopsis of the book and, and let people know where they can purchase it, purchase it if they would like to? Definitely. Well, funny enough, a lot of this book was written – right before I got to Buffalo. And so I, I torn my pec. I was going on my eighth year in the NFL, signed a multi-year contract. Then I tore my pec. Uh, before that, I'd gotten benched. And then I, then my, my, our house flooded. Like so many things happened. I didn't know if I was going to play football again. And, and I noticed during my time playing that though the NFL is great, you were teammates and coaches, all that stuff, oftentimes people, whether you're an NFL player or not, we tend to hide. We tend to pretend. We tend to put on these figurative masks just to try to fit in. And I realized that uh, that weight that we carry is not healthy. And so as I started going through my process of, of what it means to be vulnerable, to be honest, to be authentic, I started realizing that there's a huge benefit and freedom in being you and in letting the world see you. Uh, specifically, I say like uh, the subtitles, how to be real in a world full of fakes. So much of what I experience, what we all experience is people who are fake on social media, 
people who are fake on Twitter, on Instagram. And this book is about what it means to be real. I think that when you read this book, you'll understand uh, the freedom that comes with being you and being real. And so uh, during my time in Buffalo, even after I got released from the team, I stayed in Buffalo for two months and I was training and training and writing as well. I'm working on this book. And so a lot of the, a lot of the pages that you'll read uh, really resonate with the stories of ups and downs that we go through in life and also what it means to be vulnerable. So you can find the book at samachobook.com. It's also on Amazon, Let the World See You. Uh, you can just type it on Amazon. And it's a book really about freedom, right? About how to be free when it seems like we're all kind of that's awesome. Stuff I love that. It love sounds it, like a really great what book. What a great message. What Sam, a great message, Sam. Thank you so much for coming on with us, talking bills, talking your book. We appreciate the time, and you guys can find him on ESPN. He's all over ESPN almost every single day. So, Sam, thank you so much for the time. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks so much.